back to Thunder Mesa Studio, where today we're going to pay a visit to Olson and Furlow's place. This structure several years ago and I thought it was high time I actually got around to finishing it. See when I first built it I didn't add uh, interior lighting like I like to do in a lot of my structures and I didn't do really detail the upstairs interior but we're gonna remedy that in this video today. At least I planned ahead because this thing actually comes apart in one two, three, four pieces so I can access the interior. The roof is a unit that comes off like that. And then the second story comes off. It actually uh, keys in. So it's a nice fit in the uh, bottom story there. That comes off. And then the roof comes off of the little lean-to also so I can access the interior. Here, let's take a look at the interior as it exists right now. You can see I did uh, add an interior to the downstairs section in the front and some crates and boxes back there that can be seen through the doorway. Nothing inside the cash store except for a flickering LED light that I've already added. And that's going to be wired up to two more lights. There's going to be one that uh, illuminates the interior of the back room here. So it'll glow through. It'll look like there's a lantern lit in the back there. And this fellow here will be silhouetted against the window. And then I'm going to put another yellow LED in the upstairs here. So I need to add some more detail to, this, uh, to the interior of this room because it'll be quite visible through these big front windows up here. But before we jump into all that, let's take a look back on how the structure went together in the first place. Just about every model railroader of my generation knows the names of John Olson and Malcolm Furlow. Their articles and photos in the modeling press of the 70s and early 80s helped to elevate the hobby into an art form. The fact is, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if it hadn't been for Olson and Furlow. So I wanted to pay tribute to these fine gentlemen in the form of a structure built with an eye toward the same wit, charm, and attention to detail that their modeling was so well known for. Olson and Furlow's place is located deep in the canyons, trackside in the whistle-stop burg of Hanging Rock. Part saloon, part rooming house, and part store, the distinctive building is literally the only going concern in town. And, like everything else in Thunder Mesa, it has an in-universe backstory to help guide the modeling. The adobe casita that forms most of the ground floor probably dates from the 1850s, but nobody can say for sure. The place was long abandoned when Olson and Furlow took it over in 1878. They were railroad men who came west with the construction gangs to help build the bridges at Horse Thief and Coyote Canyons. But that was backbreaking work, and so, as the story goes, they decided to go freelance and open a saloon. They were creative and resourceful fellows who had a way of making the most of whatever was at hand. Their new venture was bashed together from materials scrounged, borrowed, or otherwise acquired from the railroad camp. They built an upper story on the adobe casita and a lean-to addition to house a small cash store. No one could deny their sense of style, and the resulting establishment made up for in personality what it may have lacked in refinement. Going way back to the beginning, the structure started out as a paper mock-up, but the design changed quite a bit during construction. The building is made almost entirely of Crescent Illustration Board, and the fancy clapboard false front is made up of layers of printed paper, from a graphic I created in Photoshop combining text with realistic CG wood textures. The downstairs adobe section is Illustration Board too, while the base is one quarter inch thick MDF carved with the Dremel to resemble flagstone. The rest of the model is assorted Grantline and Wiseman castings, basswood lumber, 
bar mills shingles, and painted sandpaper for the lean-to roof. Now, let's head back over to the workbench to see where things are at today. I think before we st install the lighting, I'm going to do some interior details here. I think the first thing I'm going to add to the upstairs is a bed. I have a Grantline iron bed frame and uh, I'm going to make a little bed to go right over here but I'm going to foreshorten it. The whole room is foreshortened. That's to allow for the lighting stuff back in here but uh, I think the bed's only going to be about an inch deep but when you look at it from the front through the windows it'll look full size. I built the bed from bits of foam core with sheets made of crepe paper and a quilt made from a square of painted paper towel. The pillows are rolled up masking tape, cut and formed to shape. The Grantline bed frame was painted metallic brass, and then the whole thing was assembled with CA glue. Then I used thinned watercolors to dirty everything up and to bring out the details. Well, there we go. Got our bed in there, and now I'm going to build a little dresser to go over on this side of the room. Um, I think I'm just going to make that out of illustration board. The dresser was assembled from 1 16th inch thick crescent illustration board with basswood feet. The assembly was then painted and weathered with craft store acrylics and shirt pins were used for the drawer pulls. I even added a lace doily to the top of the dresser, just painted on with antique white acrylics. dresser. That's how I do, uh, you know, basically quick and dirty details like that. Things that won't hold up close up, really, but look great when viewed through the windows of a structure. Tell there. So now, I'm just going to glue that in place. Here's your interior details. So now I'm ready to start on the interior lighting. You see I put a little square of cardboard back in here, of illustration board, with a hole in it, and that is going to hold this three millimeter LED in place and shine the light. I want the light directed straight down on this, this little pile of details in the back room here. So it'll look like there's a lantern hanging on this, hanging from the ceiling pointing down there. Nice thing about LEDs is that you can you can bend them to shape. See I've bent that at a, a right angle. 
so it points straight down, but the wires will come over here out of sight. The nice thing about LEDs is you'll probably never have to change them. <laughs> they'll, they'll live longer than I will. So I'm just going to go ahead and cement that in place with um, some epoxy. Okay, that one's not going anywhere. Now I need to add a second LED up here to illuminate the upstairs bedroom. Second interior LED installed, and it's just held in, in place here with some black gaffer's tape. This is great stuff if you haven't uh, ever used it. Gaffer's tape is what duct tape would like to be when it grows up. Great stuff. All right, now we need to put all of these wires together. LED lighting is polarity specific, so you need to keep track of which lead is positive and which is negative. I always use red wire for the positive lead so I can tell at a glance how the power should be routed to the structure lighting. Well, now for the moment of truth, Let's see if everything works. Just keep a 9 volt battery around. Test these little projects. Alright. Yay! I love it when a plan comes together. One thing I should explain while I've got all this out here is um, the flickering LED. Uh, this is one of the most asked questions I get. How do I do the flicker on the lanterns? And it's really, really simple. I buy flickering LEDs. No special electronics are required uh, for these anymore. You can just buy flickering LEDs. Uh, I get them on eBay. They come from, uh, from Hong Kong or Shanghai, generally. And uh, I buy them in bulk. Uh, Get a big bag of a hundred of them for you know <laughs> ten bucks, and uh, they were great. You can get them already with the uh, resistors already already uh, installed on there, so the wiring is very simple. You just have to uh, hook them up to power, and you're good to go. Now I've got this wiring pigtail coming up here. I can put all of this together. And uh, woo -hoo. we can test it out on the layout pretty soon. Okay, I believe the surgery was successful. The patient the patient is uh, is doing well, and uh, there's just one more little thing I would need to do, and that's attach this um, two prong pin connector here. That way I'll be able to plug and unplug the model from the layout if I ever need to move it. Now if I did everything right, just flip the switch and the light should come on. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's see how it looks at night.
And I think that's going to wrap up our visit to Olson and Furlow's place. Thanks for stopping by, amigos. Until next time, adios for now and buenos noches.